Finally, there's something new in the back garden. I've really been taking my time with developing it back here, but I wanted to get this guy in because I want to plant some roses on it. Now, as far as the garden arch is concerned, the reason that I have it is functional. So for the roses that I'm going to be planting today, but also to create a kind of a focal centerpiece in the garden. I actually took down a trellis that was over the old gate here. And I was thinking about putting this in the same place, but I realized that it might be a little bit too kind of imposing right there and you wouldn't really see the effect as much whereas here more in the center of the garden it can draw the eye upwards and also create a really beautiful place to grow functional roses so a few weeks ago I ordered the roses I looked online I went to David Austin which is a really reputable rose retailer and um, grower and they have a really great function on their website so you can troll on there for what you need. There's so many different types of roses so it was easy to be able to select that I want a climbing rose, I want a rose that's going to be repeat flowering, one that's fragrant, one that attracts bees, and then one that also produces really good rose hips because I love rose hip tea and I love being able to have a multi-purpose, functional rose or any type of plant, really. So the idea with these two roses that I'm going to be planting today is that they will climb up and over this arch. Next summer, I'll be able to harvest the flowers if I want to, also the hips next autumn and for the years to come. And the bees will love it and it's going to look gorgeous too. So the variety that I chose is called the Generous Gardener and it has pale pink flowers, has a really deeply scented old rose scent and they've arrived bare root. And this is what they come in. So it's a plastic bag and they don't look like much right now, but come next year and the year after and the year after and they will fill out and look stunning over this arch. So this is what it looks like. The roots are all completely bare. You'd hardly know that this is alive. It's just dormant though. And you can plant roses at any time of the year, really, as long as it's not freezing. So like cold frozen ground. And also in this bag from David Austin, it's a really helpful guide on planting these guys. And so what I'm going to do today is get these guys in the ground. So here we are using the instructions in here, which are pretty easy. And that'll be my gardening project for the day. The first thing I'm going to do is take this twine off and separate the plants. I'm going to put a plant on either side of that arch. I've just noticed that there is a warning on the plant label. Plant propagation without a license may be illegal. Kind of scary actually, but I imagine that this is not for the home gardener. It's more for someone who would propagate roses in order to sell them on. Right, David Austin? <laughs> All right. So the roots of these are actually quite moist being in that bag, but the directions are to soak the roots to rehydrate them in a bucket of water for about half an hour. We won't need as long, but I'm going to put them in here for at least a good 10, 15 minutes. Just tuck them down into this bucket. And while they're soaking, I'm going to go and prepare the holes that they'll be dug into. The soil is so much different from the soil that I have at the allotment garden. At the allotment garden, it's a very heavy clay that I've been adding manure to and compost to for years. Here, this is much, much sandier. It still holds its form when I squeeze it. So I think it's going to be quite good, actually, especially with a really nice layer of mulch on top because my beds that I'll be putting back here are going to be no dig and I'll be starting those very soon. I'm going to get some advice on those first. 
before I start work, but it's really interesting to see the soil and kind of get a little bit more familiar with its texture. Well, the recommendation for the whole size is about 16 inches wide and about 20 inches deep. Um, I'm going to dig some manure in now, so some composted farmyard manure, and it's organic as well. I purchased it, it's just here in this bag. It's important to use organic manure in your gardens because non-organic comes from animals that might have antibiotics in their excrement and things that could kill soil, bacteria, and microbes. So organic is always better. That manure really added a really rich, dark color to the soil. It also has quite a smell, I'll be honest. Now over here, I have one of the roses and it's been soaking about 15 minutes or so. And I also have some mycorrhizal fungi. Now this stuff, this helps plants to form bonds with the soil and to improve the root structure. So it will really help this plant to grow roots very quickly and to establish it and create a good base for it to grow for the years to come. So we're gonna sprinkle what's in there all over the roots here. The directions say to put it in the hole as well, but I'm not really sure that that's necessary. As long as it comes into contact with the roots, you're good to go. I guess sprinkling this over the roots, over the hole, will get it in the hole anyway. So now I'm gonna spread this out and this part here needs to be a couple of inches underneath the soil. So you actually will start planting these roses up to about here. So the last thing that I need to do before letting it do its own thing is give it a good watering. And I'm just going to use the same water that I used to soak the plants in earlier. I'm just gonna put it into my watering can, just to make it a little bit easier for watering. Well, that's pretty much it. Now it can sort itself out and I can get around to the other side to plant the other rows. There we go. Both of them are in. They're both angled towards the garden arch. And though they don't look like much right now, they will eventually climb over this pretty new garden arch. Mission accomplished, at least for today. Both of the roses are in, they've got a good watering, and now I'm just going to leave them alone until next year. And then one of my next projects back here in the home garden will be to create a proper pathway that goes up to the greenhouse. And that's really just to keep everything tidy, but also to make it safe. This is a little bit of an incline here and there have been a couple times walking up to the greenhouse already that I've had a little bit of a slip. Nothing serious, but it makes me concerned about creating a lot more of a safe area if I'm gonna be walking up and down regularly, which I plan on doing. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you are planting roses right now, let me know what varieties you've chosen or which your favorite varieties are. And if you're getting hips off them too, because it doesn't seem like it's that common for garden roses to produce really good hips, unlike the wild roses. And um, thank you again for watching and for supporting Lovely Greens. And I'll see you next week for another gardening video. Catch you then.